Hey everybody, this is Sabrina. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you're here and enjoying my reading journal videos. They are so much fun to put together. I have two books from March to share. The first one on the left hand side is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I think that's how you say it. I love to start with washi tape. I just feel like that is an easy way to bring color to the spread and also helps me to kind of frame in the page. Um, so I usually put washi tape up at the top and the bottom and I'm doing the same thing or the usual thing that I do. I'm also going to grab some stamps that I feel like coordinate well with the cover. I decided to go with a lighter yellow and also when I stamped the red I took a lot of the ink off the red because I didn't want this to appear too fall-ish and I didn't want the colors to be too um yeah I just didn't want them to be too fallish. I wanted it to be subtle is my was my goal and I just put them in a few different spots, which really helps with uh, eye movement going around the page. I also make sure to add the inside of the leaves with the brown stamp, which I love how those turned out. And once I have that, I can start working on adding in the other pieces that I want to include. One thing I did want to add for both of these spread, spreads was to go ahead and use a alpha stamp that I had from Allie Edwards and I'm going to stamp uh, some words for the left hand side, that book, and then also the right hand side. I wasn't sure at first what word I might or phrase I might stamp for seven year slip but I wound up with the phrase, what if, which I felt like was really perfect. And I wanted it to coordinate with the spread, and so I picked brown. I thought that black might be too bold and kind of in your face, so I went with brown. And my stamping wasn't perfect, but I actually liked that, that it wasn't like in your face, like I said. So what if worked, and then I just put, three ellipses and called it done and it looks really good and you can see I added the my rating boxes and now I can go ahead and start. I want to put the quote next to where the book cover is because I like doing that lately with this one page format. Usually if it was two pages I would do a big stamp sentiment but now that it's one page, I pick a quote. So the quote that I picked was, that was love, wasn't it? It wasn't just a quick drop. It was falling over and over again for your person. It was falling as they became new people. It was learning how to exist with every breath and it wasn't something you planned for. So this book was a wonderful love story and I definitely think that I liked it or enjoyed it more than the dead romantics. I've always had an issue with like time travel books. I just don't feel like they're done necessarily well or maybe not well for me, but this book was fantastic. I loved the time travel aspect, especially when it pertained to bringing a romance together. So the synopsis is Clementine likes plans and sticks to them. The only problem is love and letting someone in. Things change when she discovers a man standing in her apartment. Clementine just knows he could be everything, but he's seven years in the past and she's starting to understand why her aunt said the apartment was special, just what you need at the right time. So just a little synopsis. I always like to go on and on about books, but I tried to keep it short and to the point. And then my thoughts are going to come next. And I will say that I had this book, and I'm going to write this in my thoughts, but I had this book as a library loan and I ran out of time and I actually went and bought it as a Kindle book, which is something I never do. I'm usually like, okay, I can wait. For this book, I could not wait. So I paid the $12 so that way I could finish the last 100 pages. It was just really good and kept me like captivated. I just had to know what was going to happen. Um, and like I said, again, it was a travel book done right. And I love the concept of um, time travel through the apartment and the characters were wonderful. And it was just a beautiful story of love and grief moving forward, embracing all the pieces of someone 
doing what makes you happy, fighting the monsters, and doing your best to live your best life. So lots of really great themes were explored in the book, and so I just, I loved it. And right now I'm reading everything for you. It's part of a series, and then I am listening to a book called Old Flames and New Fortunes, which is an interesting book. I don't remember how I stumbled upon it, but it has to do with witchcraft and romance, and I don't know if it's completely captured my interest, so I'm not sure if I will continue with that book. So I'm giving the seven-year slip like four and a half stars. The genre is romance and magical realism, and then it was my 33rd book read. And then I will go on to the next book, which is called The Happiest Man on Earth, and I think that everyone should read it. I think it should be required reading. It tells the story of Auschwitz survivor Eddie Yaku, and it's just unbelievably heartbreaking. Um, So, yes, I think everyone should read it or listen to it because he narrates the book and he actually wrote the book, I think, when he was 100. And he lived to be 102, I believe. So, really incredible book. And I'm also going to stamp some words that I can add to the top and the bottom of the page. And I also wanted to bring in a little bit of blue. So, I am going to find a stamp that will work good to stamp in blue. And also, that way it can bring out the colors of the color. Uh, Colors of the cover. Goodness gracious, getting tongue tied. And Uh, I am stamping strength in all lower cases, and as I was going to start my uh, synopsis, I thought of my second word that I wanted to do, which was hope. Um, I don't remember where that popped into my head, but it was the perfect word. Uh, So I'm going to do that in all capital letters, because that is one of the reasons that I really like to read World War II historical fiction is because of the strength and the hope and the resilience of people during this tumultuous time where people were faced with the worst atrocities. They're the worst atrocities, yes. So I decided on a circle. I felt like a circle was really symbolic for hope and life, and so I just figured a circle would work well. And I stamped it in a few different places, and once I have it stamped, I can go ahead and start on my synopsis of this book. Um, I just, I just love it. So the synopsis is about Eddie Yaku thought of himself as a German first and then a Jew, and this all changed in 1938 when Yaku was beaten, arrested, and taken to a concentration camp. For the next seven years, Yaku faced the worst horrors. He survived both um, death camps and then a death march. Throughout Yaku's seven years, he held on to hope that if he made it out alive, he would be unimaginably happy. That would be the best form of justice. He could go on to live a beautiful life and pay tribute to all those all of those people that he lost. And this is exactly what Eddie Yaku did. He wrote this powerful memoir at age 100 to share his powerful, heartbreaking, inspiring, and profound story. Yaku's message was that happiness can be found in the darkest times. And again, he narrated the memoir and it was just full of wisdom. And you will see later on when I am trying to figure out what quote to include that it was very hard. So I wound up doing a flip up and using very tiny screenshots to make my quotes because I just couldn't narrow it down and I wanted to be able to have a lot of quotes to include. There really is just a lot of wisdom about life and hope and happiness in the darkest of times in this book. Very very emotional book what um, Yaku went through, but his attitude is just unbelievable. He really portrayed, I mean, I think 
it's not portrayed. I think it was actually his, his attitude. His attitude was one of, I am going to survive and I am going to be happy and I will have a beautiful life. Um, the German people, the Germ- the Jewish cannot be taken down. And I just found that absolutely amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. And so my thoughts, you guys kind of already know my thoughts, but I felt like, um, I feel like that this is an extraordinary book and definitely a book that will stay with me. It, and it's absolutely no small feat that Eddie Yaku survived the most wretched atrocities. And his perspective on life and the way that he looked upon life, like, I will survive. That will be my retribution. And that will be how I honor those that I've lost by being happy and surviving and having that amazing amazing life. And he said, a life where you are kind and see the joy in life and you pay attention to your side of the fence and help others. So much goodness in that book. I have the flip up all made and now I'm just going to stamp on it a little bit, but because I decide to print out some screenshots, I wind up covering up some of the stamping, but that's okay with me. I just wanted to have a spot to put a lot of quotes because there is so many quotes in this book. Um, I decided to add some more washi tape to where the kind of the the fold is that way you can't really tell where the fold is Um, and then I go ahead and measure the two sections that I have for quotes it's like three by two and then two by two and then I will grab the printed screenshots from my printer and add them down and like like you can see they're very tiny but that's totally okay and then I will read them to you in just a second but as always I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my reading journal videos and I just I love sharing my books and I'd love to know what what you guys are reading right now so I thought I was done with this spread and then I forgot to add the rating of course it's five stars Stars, and then the book was number 38 for me and it was nonfiction um, regarding the Holocaust. So I just flipped back to the beginning to kind of help me count everything out. Okay, so these quotes got super tiny so I figured I might as well just read just a few of them for you because there is lots of nuggets of wisdom and I think that this might actually be a memoir that I listen to again. It's actually relatively short. So this, let me just pick a few quotes and then I'll read them to you. So this one says, here's what I learned. Happiness does not fall from the sky. It is in your hands. Happiness comes from inside yourself and from the people you love. And if you're happy and healthy, you are a millionaire. And then this one down here says, Kindness is the greatest wealth of all. Small acts of kindness last longer than a lifetime. This lesson that kindness and generosity and faith in your fellow man are more important than money is the first and greatest lesson my father ever taught me. So, beautiful, incredible book. This one was, it was just amazing. And this book was wonderful as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing both of these come together. I would love a thumbs up or a subscribe if you are new to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Have a great day. Bye.